you should go make your dream project already. And I know there are probably many reasons not to do that, but in my view, they don't really outweigh the responsibility you have to the idea that chose you. And if you want to see it, then chances are someone else does too. So you should go for it. And I'm right there along with you trying to do the same thing. Hello, hello, my name is Roberto Cuevas and I am Cued. And over the last several years, I've been relentlessly trying to learn everything I can about the filmmaking process, all so that I can bring my dream project to life. This stuff isn't exactly easy. There's so much that I wish I had known when I was starting. As I embark on making my dream project a reality, I'm finding 10 things that are really helping me with creative mindset. And I felt like sharing them with you for any of you out there who maybe would find this helpful. So here are 10 creative tips to help you start to bring your dream project to life. So the first tip is to make the smallest version of the thing you want to see. And the great thing about coming up with a compressed version of the concept is it limits the amount of things you need to learn and it's quick, repeatable, and it helps you develop your creative voice. And it ultimately leads you to the things you really want to do. Make a solid plan to do the small version of the idea and then gather your tools. And by figuring out what exactly it is you want to achieve, you can work your way backwards and then figure out what are the necessary tools and techniques that you'll need to learn to bring that vision to life. All right, for this, I'm going to just do a rapid fire list of tools that I highly recommend for anyone who wants to do any sort of multimedia visual storytelling. Starting with the iPhone. Everyone talks about it just for filmmaking, but I also think it's a powerful VFX tool and there's so much more that you can do with this now. You're gonna want the Blackmagic camera app to film your stuff. Then you're gonna want Art Studio Pro to create matte paintings and backgrounds. Then you're gonna want Nomad Sculpt to create 3D models. Then you're gonna want Node Video to be able to create your visual effects and even do a little bit of 3D animation there. You're finally gonna want LumaFusion for editing, compositing, and color grading. I'm telling you, these tools are powerful and they're game changing. When it comes to the desktop, tools like Blender, Unreal Engine, Cascader, and even Godot are really, really powerful tools for creating games to full-on cinematic visual effects. And the best part is they're all free, with the exception of Unreal Engine, which I think is shifting to a paid model in the future. But other than that, the rest of them are free, and it's so incredible that tools like this are available to us. And this stuff just wasn't possible like even like five years ago for me, so this is really exciting. Tools like this can be challenging, but that's why it's helpful to know what it is you're even trying to do. I tend to learn best when I have purpose that helps me focus and that keeps me motivated when I inevitably run into things that are maybe a bit challenging. When it came to learning how to create cinematics, I learned Unreal Engine over the course of a weekend. I think if anything, more people can do it. Just having that clear goal really helps a lot. Tools can be intimidating, but we can be more intimidating, right? Or better yet, we can just go with the flow. Not forcing anything and just letting the answers arrive naturally. In the past, I've had a tendency to be very rigid with the final quality of the output of my own personal work, feeling like it's just not quite as perfect as it, I would want it to be, even though it can never be perfect. And I'm really just overcompensating for insecurities that I have, which has led me in the past to burnout. Now, I am currently working on my dream project, which I can't really talk about. Just kind of being in this flow state has really helped the project move with ease and momentum in a way that is just really unusual for me. Mechanically, all of the pieces are falling into place. I'm finding all the right collaborators and I'm getting opportunities for this thing. And frankly, I have simply never had this kind of luck before. I really would attribute that to not forcing any particular outcomes and really just letting things happen. I'm just trying to cultivate you know, an atmosphere of ease and not get too attached to the struggle and too attached to how difficult this process is and really just letting things be what they need to be. If I'm attached to the struggle and how few resources I have and how hard it is to make something, well then inevitably I'm going to attract more projects like that. So we're not doing that here. No stress. Let's have fun. Even when difficulties arise, we can pivot and we can take our time with with them and do our best. And I'm finding that problem solving is a lot easier when I'm not trying to forcefully find the answer. The fourth tip is to lean into your advantages. For me specifically, this looks like viewing my perceived disadvantages as advantages and strengths. Throughout my 20s, I struggled to be present, feeling like I'm not quite where I want to be, constantly looking to the future, and now I'm trying to view this differently. Let's say I had gotten to where I really want to be. I would not have the time to work on things like my dream project and develop my skills and my voice. 
really looking at everything and where I'm at and really seeing it as an advantage has been so empowering because when that energy is not right and where it's not where it needs to be, I feel like that can show up in the work. I really wanna make sure that I'm creating something that comes from a genuine place of love for the craft and enjoy where I'm at. So the fifth tip is to be confident and trust yourself. You don't need more information and you don't have to spend you know a whole year watching tutorials before you take action. You've got this and you can do it. And you might already have the answers you're looking for. A great example of this is while working on my dream project, I accidentally created a system that's very similar to the thing I am inspired by. And I learned this when I re-engaged with the thing that I'm inspired by, which I'm still admittedly very new to. And I saw the idea that I came up with, that I was like, well, I'm kind of late and I'm kind of ripping off this idea, kind of. But it shows that the idea works and that I didn't need more information. And I know confidence is something that's been talked about a ton. In a lot of ways, I felt like I'm not quite as confident as I used to be before starting any of this stuff, because there's a level of confidence you have when you don't know as much. And the more you learn, the more you realize, hey, this is just not as possible as I thought it was. Maybe not feeling fully resourced in my life and also looking around at contemporaries and peers and people I even admire and look up to and watching them be completely rejected has been very demoralizing at times. If they're gonna be rejected, what chance do I have, right? All of these things, in addition to many other global factors have been a big reason why I actually haven't been making more you know, videos here because I've been just trying to figure it out on my own and it's hard, it's difficult. I turned 27 on the 26th of December. I marked the end of my golden year, I'm just sort of realizing I am too old for this. <laughs> And I don't mean to trivialize these feelings, but it's more of coming to the realization that we are worthy of bringing our creative dreams to life simply because the ideas came to us. It is so much easier now to be confident because I have to be, because like it's up to me to be able to bring these ideas to life. And it's also up to you to do the same. But as you're finding yourself and you're trusting yourself and becoming more confident, you also need to find like-minded people that actually believe in you. Everyone says surround yourself with ambitious people, but they also need to be people that are firmly in your corner, who have your back and will pour into you just as much as you pour into them. We live in a world that is built around social proof currency and external validation. It's very easy for us to get caught up in what we view people as and not who they actually are and not really seeing them. A lot of people view others through what they can do for them and not who they actually are and not really recognizing their value. Not feeling heard, valued, or seen in certain friendships or even feeling passed over for some someone else has been something that has affected my confidence. I am taking you know, much, much more care and cultivating the right circle of people around me. And honestly, that's mostly through the internet. It's mostly digital. I have a really good example of what I'm talking about. So behind me is a computer. And this is a computer I did not have until 2022 when the lovely master of the magical creative arts, Nora Mercier, gave me a computer that they didn't need anymore. And they just sent it to me after knowing me for about a year, I suppose. And like we'd never really met face to face or anything. And they gave me a tool that I didn't have. I didn't have a computer that could do things like Unreal Engine and some of the bigger things that would allow me to take my creative practice to the next level. They did that for me and I am immensely grateful, but it's something that really showed me this person I've barely known. They believed in me and invested in me. That's something that's so powerful to me. That's the power of surrounding yourself with people that you know you really believe in and that believe in you and you can create together. I would much rather create with people that I'm on the ground with and us come up together and make something amazing versus trying to lobby for someone's approval. And I think we all are too good for that. Learning from all of these people in my circle now who are so brilliant and such visionary creators, has been really fruitful for me. It shows me that I'm not alone in this. And that's a really, really important thing. I also have to shout Anora out again. Their work is incredible. I highly recommend you go check them out and hire them because they're amazing. And I'm so stoked to be able to work with them in a much bigger way in the future. Seventh tip, we're still going, uh, tune out the noise. This is very short, but you're probably going to care about what people think, even though it's something that we probably don't wanna do. And that's okay, that's normal. And then rather than beating yourself up about that, maybe just tune out the noise. Like maybe you don't have to worry about the social media rat race, even though everyone tells you to because it's important to market yourself. But maybe you can just focus on doing what you wanna do and creating for yourself. Challenging yourself to create stuff solely for the enjoyment and the artistry and not attaching some sort of objective or some sort of metric of success to just tuning out the noise and doubling down, focusing on yourself, it's something I'm trying to do more of now. Number eight, don't overthink. What will happen sometimes is I'll get to the end of a project. I will be so close to finishing. And then I go, let's do the whole thing all over again. And I'm like, oh, and I always do this. 
You have to remember there are people less qualified and not even as talented as you in really, really high positions of success and power. They're not overthinking, you shouldn't either. Number nine, celebrate your wins. You have to be able to acknowledge when you've done a good job. I see so many people that take pride in just denigrating and just eviscerating their own work. I feel like you have to acknowledge what works in order to acknowledge what doesn't work. You have to be able to look at things objectively and honestly, and that doesn't just mean cynically hating everything you do. I've even had to aggressively compliment friends of mine who have created something and they see all the problems and I'm like, you must stop this. This is not objective anymore and now you're just being silly. Celebrate your wins. Celebrate what you did right and support yourself and encourage yourself because that's really going to be the only way you're going to be able to continuously grow and move to where you want to be. It doesn't mean that you've done everything right or that you've arrived. You know, people say, oh, don't be so egotistical. Don't be so arrogant. But I think there's a lot of egotism and even a lot of arrogance when you say that you're the worst and you've done the worst and it's the worst. That's really excessive and we should stop doing this. Just a suggestion though. But the 10th tip is to just enjoy the process. For me, that looks like not stressing and not hating everything with intense self-loathing, but really just being purely in the process and having fun with it and making that just as important as the final goal. By reframing this, we can enjoy our lives where we're at. It's what I'm trying to do right now. Being so risk averse has led me to kind of just waiting for the day when things will be better. And rather than cultivating the environment and the life that I want for myself right now and enjoying where I'm at right now, even if I'm not quite where I want to be. Enjoying the process kind of shifts me more to a problem solving mentality. That's something that I feel a lot better about and more motivated to be able to tackle the inevitable future ups and downs of life. So that was a lot, but to summarize everything, first, you wanna make the smallest thing, then you can gather your tools, go with the flow, lean into your advantages, confidently trust in yourself. I'm gonna scroll because there's so many tips. Find like-minded people who actually believe in you, tune out the noise, don't overthink, celebrate your wins, and enjoy the process. These aren't exactly the most technical tips in the world, but they're really helping me now. I am less interested in chasing a seat at some table, a table that would probably get destroyed in a company merger. I am so much more excited to really be collaborating and working with immensely talented artists that I get to call my friends. We can innovate and we can make new stuff and really just go after this in a way that I've never really done before. I have like a whole slate of projects right now and I have literally never had a slate of projects ever before. I am amped, but I'm also amped for you because I cannot wait to see everything it is that you do. And when you do create your stuff, please send it to me because I would really like to see it. I'm invested now, I really am, I wanna see what you do. But just remember, you've got this, all right? Even if everyone tells you your idea is crazy or that you can't do it or they don't get it or they don't understand it, I believe in it and I believe in you. And that's all that matters is that I believe in you. No, but you've got this, you can do this. And I truly look forward to seeing what you all are truly capable of creating.